Ocean Sea. People can buy part of the island and name it even. Its construction was started in 2003 and was completed in 2008. But due to the financial crisis of 2008, these islands weren't bought by many. Now it's just abandoned pieces of land. Is this the cutest island or what? The island is filled with rabbits all around. This place is known as Okushima Island. But let's tell you that behind this cuteness, there's also a dark past. During World War II, this island was built to develop poisonous gas to attack China. Due to the poisonous gases, more than 80,000 soldiers of China died. This island was a secret and Japan even removed it from the map at that time. Now, this island only has a museum here with many of these cute creatures. It's said that these rabbits were left here by a school and then multiplied into a bunch of them. You know Maldives is a beautiful fancy island, but beyond that lies a waste island. It was built to get rid of the waste that was covering the island and every day around 700 tons of waste was generated. When it was burnt, it would pollute the island and affect tourists. To solve this issue, they made this island. But many believe that it needs to get rid of this waste that's polluting the clean water. These are the five weirdest islands that we found on Earth. Do you know about any others? Let us know in the comments. After made in India iPhones, can we expect made in India Google Pixels? More importantly, are the Pixel, the flagship lineup, coming to India? We have a surprise for you on the show. And of course, the biggest things launched at the India Mobile Congress from a Tech Today perspective. All that and a lot more. I'm your host, Ayush Elavadi, and this is Tech Today. For iPhone fans, there's iOS. Then there's a bunch of Android manufacturers giving you all sorts of versions and interpretations of their operating systems. But what about stock Android fans, here in India especially? Well, they have one line for these two devices, the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro. Welcome back to India. The Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro are now officially back in India and they're available for 60,000 and 85,000 rupees respectively. Of course, with a lot of cashback offers and exchange offers, you can get this for nearly 70,000 rupees. So, would you be buying an iPhone 14 or a much more reasonable stock Android Google Pixel 7 Pro? But what's it capable of? They both come with the new Tensor, like Apple has silicon. Now, Google, of course, has Tensor from last year. And this is the new G2, capable of much better camera performance and a bunch of new features. But we're at the Google Pixel event, so we want to experience some of them. But before we do, I want to tell you what it feels like. They're much lighter to hold than the iPhones. I think this is a real opinion divider, this sort of bezel or this, this protrusion at the back. I'm not quite sure. Look, in terms of usability, when you put it together, this might be a little strange for a lot of you. Once you get used to it, what I like about it is that it really sets it apart from the other devices. If you're comparing it even to an iPhone in terms of what an iPhone looks like, look, this is an iPhone and we know that Apple gets their design right, but iPhones have looked similar for so many years as opposed to Google trying something new over here. I'd imagine it'd be a little difficult when you're placing it on a table, perhaps if you place it right here. But you know what? Strangely enough, there's no wobble. This is just our first impressions. I like the colors, but it does feel much lighter than most Android and, of course, Apple flagships. And that's kind of interesting because you're getting a lot with the G2. Pixel devices over the years have been known for their camera performance. You put one lens, one sensor, and they still do a good job with a lot of computation photography and software algorithms. Can they do this with cinematic blur? Is it anything like the cinematic mode on the iPhone? Let's give you a sneak peek. Okay, the devices feel good in the hand. They're both powered by the Tensor chip. But what does that mean? This feature is the cinematic blur. That's exactly how it works. Now, of course, we're back on the Tech Today camera. We'll be testing that extensively on Tech Today when we can review the phone and I've had some time with the devices. But for now, our initial impressions, 
Well, that's kind of interesting that they have cinematic mode and we'll be comparing that with an iPhone very soon. Obviously, what does powered by Google Tensor really mean? They make the Pixel fast, they claim it makes it smart and secure as well. But in terms of the display, you have a 6.7 inch QHD plus LTPO smooth display, refresh rate up to 120 hertz on the Pixel 7 Pro. The camera is 48 megapixels, a telephoto lens, a 5x optical zoom, 50 megapixel wide lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide lens with autofocus, and then of course you have a 10.8 megapixel front camera with 4K video. Of course, it comes with water and dust protection, IP68. And when you're talking about the smaller sibling, the Pixel 7, it comes with a 6.3 inch FHD plus smooth display, but this one clocks in only 90 hertz when you're talking about refresh rate. A 50 megapixel wide lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 10.8 megapixel front camera with 4K video, similar to its elder sibling. This also comes with the Google Tensor G2 chip, and of course, this also comes with water and dust protection IP68. Well, Google claims both these devices come with over 24 hours of battery with fast charging. We'll be testing that claim on Tech Today. Look, there's a bunch of industry first features on the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. Google claims there's a new feature as well, which is called Photo Unblur. For your blurry images, they can be fixed by the algorithm using machine learning. Google's really good at that, but we will test that claim on Tech Today once we have the devices with us in an extensive review. There's also other features from the past like Magic Eraser, which do a fairly decent job at removing things that you don't want from older photos and newer ones as well. But we have a bunch of questions about these devices. Will they be made in India? For now, there's no clarity from Google yet. No official confirmation. We'd hope that these devices are made in India in the coming days, weeks or months, so they become more accessible and affordable. Look, iPhones are being made in India. We can hope that the Pixel line is also perhaps in the future made in India. But we had a bunch of other questions. So let's have an expert from Google answer them for you. The Pixel lineup is finally here and it's launched in India. Google Pixel fans will be very happy. We're at the launch event here in New Delhi and I have with me a very special guest, Sonia from Google. Sonia, what a pleasure to have you on Tech Today. Thank you, thank you for having me. Sonia, the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro are here. There's a mixed bag of reactions because we still want the Pixel Watch. But, but what's the whole genesis of the idea of bringing the Pixel lineup back to India? Yeah, Pixel, uh, India is a very important market, not just for Pixel, but for Google in general. And so we're super excited to be back here with these amazing two new devices. Okay, I'm gonna geek it out, right? Uh, there's several features that will launch at the global event with the Pixel watches as well. A lot of Fitbit integrations coming in over there, and I think users would benefit with some of them. So is that something we can see with the Pixel Watch building into the future trends where you can really synergize and build on the Google ecosystem? So in general, I think Rick talked about this in, in his uh, keynote last night. Right? We have a really big vision around ambient computing and you as a user having the computing power you need, where you need it, when you need it, and in the form you need it in. And so you're going to see more and more synergy between our Pixel products. Okay, so last question. India pricing seems to be the real deal breaker. And with a bunch of offers for a lot of users, we can see this being a very interesting proposition for even people in the flagship space. Was that something uh, that was worked on globally and of course in India to make it really tantalizing for the consumers? It really is. We think we have some amazing devices that we've been working on that have truly helpful features that can help all sorts of people be the best versions of themselves. And to enable that and to enable users to try it out, we've put some attractive pricing on our devices. I'm hoping that people will try it, check it out, experience it and enjoy it. There you go, making your lives a whole lot easier with technology. That's what we do on Tech Today as well. Sonia, what a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. 5G, 5G, 5G. That's been in the news so much, especially because of the launch of the technology at the India Mobile Congress. And rightly so, we're bringing you all the latest and the greatest from the IMC in the second half of the show. But the conversation on 6G has already begun in the corridors of government and in the private sector with chip makers as well. Our managing editor at Business Today TV, Siddharth Zarabi, caught up with the president and CEO at Qualcomm, one of the biggest chip makers in the world, Cristiano Amon, and here's what he had to say. I'm aware of the fact that you have a long pipeline of products uh, that are always in development. I don't know what you can talk about, but the Prime Minister recently, just a few days ago, spoke about 6G. So we are still waiting for 5G to sort of change our lives. 
What is 6G and what sort of role is Qualcomm going to play in that? Well, uh, as you'd expect, I think uh, Qualcomm will be very active in the development of 6G. We already are. I think we usually start developing a technology about 10 years before it gets deployed. So uh, we, we're already active in 6G. And I think 6G uh, will be likely a natural evolution of 5G. However, uh, why are we all moving towards the next generation of wireless? 5G will stay here for a very long time, and especially because 5, 5G is going to touch so many industries. One of the things we saw in the past is many of the technologies and inventions that are being developed for 5G also end up being applied to 4G, and you saw things like 4G Advance. Now we're talking, for example, about 5G Advance, which is going to be a mid-cycle upgrade of 5G, which will have some elements of te techniques and inventions that are part of 6G. So we're going to see some overlap between the two technologies, and I expect uh, 6G will probably will become a reality at the end of the decade. 5G, 6G, connected cars, smart ambulances, immersive viewing experiences, something called the metaverse. That's what we want to showcase from the India Mobile Congress on the other side of this commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Tech Today. I'm your host, Ayush Alabadi. Now, the biggest news break of the week happens to be the launch of 5G in India at the India Mobile Congress. And if you've been tuned in to the Business Today social media handles and the India Today network, we've been bringing you all the updates from the event as soon as they happened. But we've had some time to compile all of them together and bring you the landmark event, the launch of 5G at the India Mobile Congress and all the coolest inventions that we saw at the event from a Tech Today lens. Have a look. You know what? I haven't taken a vacation in years. I've never seen the Taj Mahal. But here at the India Mobile Congress in the Nokia booth, I'll be able to experience Taj Mahal in its magnificence. So I'm going to strap this on and I'll be able to see the Taj Mahal. Okay, so I can see the Taj Mahal here. Not just that, I can also see birds flying in the sky. Alright, so I'm here at the main gate of the Taj Mahal. Okay, so I'm on the top of the Taj Mahal right here. I can see the clouds. I can see the monument right here. I can also see the gardens here. 
Well, that was an exciting experience. Although I've never seen the Taj Mahal for real, I've seen Taj Mahal in the VR world with this immersive kit. Never shoot whilst driving. That's the golden rule of TV. But I'm not driving an ordinary car. I'm here at the Ericsson booth at the India Mobile Congress. And what I find fascinating is that I'm driving a car a few thousand kilometers away in another country, in the lovely country of Sweden. I press the gas pedal and boom, the car starts moving. Look, I, and that's exactly what I did. This is happening in real time, guys. If you have a look at the screen, I'm going to try getting out of here. And why are we talking about this today on Tech Today? Well, essentially, I'm going to press the brakes and give you a little bit of an explainer. We're talking about this because this is all possible via 5G networks. Low latency networks mean that the lag is always minimal when you're using these vehicles. And obviously, this is a lovely use case to demonstrate. On top, you can see an aerial view, a point of view, and then, of course, like you're playing a video game down over here. But you could do this in places where human beings cannot go. You could embellish this, add on more technology, maybe add more 4K cameras, thermal sensing, add a robotic arm to it as well. We've seen all sorts of Robocons all over the world. This makes being in two places at the same time absolutely totally possible and for me this is mind-blowing technology right here with this 5g autonomous solution so arnav could you tell us what do we have here what is this and how is it going to help in the education of people that's a buzzword i've been hearing since morning yes thank you uh, so today we have education system or the future of education or classrooms okay. wherein with geo glass and geo 5g we are able to give immersive education content to every student in every school in India, right? So 5G acts as a conduit to deliver this uh, new immersive forms of content. And using this tablet, teachers can basically control the content that the students are looking at, okay. right? She can also give personal attention to students because she can track every student. You can see as a teacher, I can see this content and Nitin is wearing a geo glass and whatever he's looking at is also streamed on the TV for all the audience here. So if I hit forward as a teacher, I can see the different layers of human body. Then we see the skeleton system. The skeleton system is the shell to our body or basically the, the system which keeps our body in posture. All right, so Nidin, could you tell us about what are you seeing? Like, we do know, but is it in a 3D perspective? How is it? So I can see the heart right here and I'm able to see all the or different parts that have been highlighted. That sounds very exciting. I believe school lessons are about to get very interesting. I'm smiling because while this is very interesting for tech geeks, could it take away my job or someone in a factory? Because essentially, this is automation at its best at the Ericsson booth. An AMR or an autonomous mobile robot, which means that you need no human intervention. You want to transfer a good from point A and you can pick it up using this robotic arm and then take it all the way to point B, which happens to be right here. So you can see this moving on a trolley. Now, where does 5G come in? Because the conversation is all about 5G. People keep asking about what private 5G networks are all about. Imagine the use case. Private 5G network in your factory, the fact that you don't need as many factory workers, and in places where humans could be endangered, you can use this technology, low latency, and everything being monitored remotely. I think that's mind-blowing tech here at the Ericsson booth. Some big moves at the IMC. Of course, there was talk about 5G and 6G, but we didn't stop there. In my panel, from Telco to Techco, we had the Telecom Secretary joining, and he spoke about how the government is already amenable and working towards satellite internet. Now, that's fascinating that at one conference, we had 5G, of course, 6G, the metaverse, so many use cases and real-world demonstrations. A few years ago, we were talking about the potential of 5G. October 1st onwards, 5G is here and 5G is here to stay. But here's a snippet of my conversation with the telecom secretary about satellite internet. Mr. Rajaraman, it's interesting if we actually look at future-proofing ourselves, because in the technology world, we always want to really forecast what it's going to be like. I know the government's already been, there's chatter about 6G and research on that generation as well. And then something that's been hogging um, a lot of the news world and, and, and Twitter really is all about satellite internet. 
what are your views and the government's views on satellite internet here in India with its use cases and potential? And more importantly, the fact that a concept like that could leapfrog the current existing technologies. In a sense, uh, I mean, you refer to 6G. I mean, what we are increasingly seeing is, is convergence of technologies. So essentially, I mean, uh, going into 6G, I think you will find all these terrestrial, non-terrestrial networks all converging. So uh, from that perspective, uh, uh, building um, high quality resilient networks would require the con convergence because then if you have a mobile phone, I think one would expect that seamlessly irrespective of whether you are near a BTS or not to give you the, the, the service. So that's already live, I, mean, I think. I mean, we have already seen uh, some countries already launching that, I think. So we ha are working I mean, towards that I mean, in the sense that uh, uh, we have made a reference to, to the, the regulator uh, uh, try for uh, coming out uh, with uh, formulations on how uh, we can use uh, the spectrum from 27.5 to 28.5 on a, on a uh, mutual, what do you say, um, uh, use case for terrestrial and non-terrestrial non, non use cases. So which means that once the recommendations come, I think we should be able to put out that spectrum for auction, which means or, uh, in, a, or in a manner that uh, TRI recommends. And after that, uh, we would see uh, probably an explosion of use cases. But it's not as if uh, technologies are not around the corner. Already we have uh, low Earth orbits, um, Leo Mio constellations. Uh, I mean, with us, I, mean, I think we have tries. I mean, uh, DOT has already given license, uh, letter of intent to OneWeb. I mean, for for uh, for a Leo Mio constellation, and we also have. Uh, I mean, I think for Geo also, we I think uh, an uh, LOI has been issued. So we expect that uh, uh, that probably by middle of next year. One would have Leo Mio uh, constellations also eating, and once these consumer devices become convergent, I mean, I think where one will be able to seamlessly switch between. I mean, already we have I mean, one uh, a couple of um, manufacturers which have provided who have net uh, uh, devices which can um, uh, connect to both terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks. I'm sure that uh, uh, maybe in the next couple of years we will see uh, I mean, uh, increasing convergence. And India is a very diverse country, so therefore, if you look at the remotest regions, I think it would require this kind of uh, uh, I mean, devices and uh, I mean, which are affordable at the same time, which are uh, resilient to these kind of uh, uh, the geography and the, and the geology, I mean, and the, the terrain and, and all that. So therefore, from that perspective, DOT is very supportive of that. We would want to facilitate this uh, convergence to happen. And we would also want the, uh, the, the, uh, to provide a facilitative environment for the emergence of uh, this convergence. And it is not as if uh, satellite communication has not moved to the next level. In India, I think uh, um, uh, Hughes Communication, for instance, has launched uh, high throughput satellite, I mean, mm -hmm. with the help of ISRO's uh, HTS satellites, has already launched HTS uh, services in the Northeast. So, I mean, we are moving towards that. Leo and Mio promises even better, uh, I mean, uh, I mean broad, uh, broad, uh, speeds and so on and so forth. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this action-packed episode from here in the Tech Today studios and, of course, at the Pixel launch event and everything that we had to get you from the India Mobile Congress. Now, on the show, we do all sorts of tests and reviews, take these gadgets and devices, EVs, do all sorts of crazy things in the water, out on the roads, on highways, in mountains. But then, I think us tech reviewers have competition and this time, it comes from the telecom minister himself. I'm going to leave you this visual. It was a telecom minister at the India Mobile Congress in a light-hearted moment, but a very cool one indeed. This is what we do on Tech Today. iPhone 14 Pro Max drop test. It has survived. The telecom minister did something similar at the IMC. Have a look. And this is your host, Ayush Alavadi, saying until next week, adios. So it's something like it's a useful mining, construction work and all. But prices aren't what I'm doing science for. I'm for uh, what for better for.
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now.